Hello guys, uh, we are back uh, right into the first real tutorial. So we will cover the basics of SQL in this video. It may be a little bit too long, but then I will split it just in two parts. Okay, we left at installing the uh, sample databases. If you didn't watch it, please uh, do it now and also install your SQL Server uh, 2014 Express Edition. So if you uh, did all of this, then you will see also see the Northwind database and we will use this Northwind database now for a few examples. So we want to cover uh, what is actually a database. What is it actually? Okay, let's have a look. Okay, a database as you can see here consists mainly of tables okay there are also other different objects that we have but for now the important thing is the data is stored in a table so a table what is a table a table consists of columns you notice from school from work whatever it's a, just a natural thing so what does a column consists of each column has a name and multiple contents of course so what is then a row? In a row is basically consists of uh, more values for uh, at most one value for every column. Okay, this all sounds a little bit theoretical, but it's just uh, like kind of formal definition. Um, one note is that the data is actually not stored in columns, but in rows in a database, in a SQL database, at least in a standard approach. Um, we see here in the Northwind uh, database, you see different tables, like we see categories, customers, employees, and stuff like this. So, how can we extract data from a database? Okay, we use SQL. This is no uh, um, big surprise, and SQL stands for Subdata Query Language, uh, Structured Query Language, sorry. Um, we have here a basic approach for a SQL statement. It's, uh, it consists of two parts, select a star or asterisk and from employees. Okay, as you can maybe imagine, employees is the table because we also see it here on the left hand side. And the star means just we want to extract all columns. So let's just select this and go to execute on the top or press a five just. And then we will realize in the bottom uh, that we have uh, the result set. So here we have our data database um, table called employees and we extracted everything from it. Meaning we have columns called employee ID, last name, first name, title and so on and so forth. And as you can see, it's just like a normal table. We extracted just every value of it. So this is a row, this is a row, this is a row. And those are the columns. This is very straightforward, right? So now we want to cover wh what does a select statement actually consist of? Okay, a basic one is select. Then we state what columns we actually want to extract. We can state them with comma separated uh, uh, text. Then we say from what table we want to extract those columns. And then we have also a where condition that says uh, what rows have uh, we want to have filtered basically okay and one a few examples so for instance we instead of extracting every column from this employees table we can just say we want to extract the only last name and first name from the employees table and then we just say see the last name and the first name it's basically the same as this one just that we selected those two columns okay uh we can also say select first name and then the last name. Then it will be like that. We can, uh, so the order is important here. What you state for column, the first, the first will also be uh, outputted column. We can also add uh, a column that is only one time in the table several times. Like for he for this example, we just extract three times the first name. If it's uh, useful in this situation, I don't know, but it's just an example. Of course, you can state uh, the column several times. So now this is very straightforward. We don't have to deep dive into it. So you select the columns from a table. After all, as uh, the query language SQL, the structured query language is called structured because it also should remind you of English. It just like orders you uh, put to the system, and the system gets you your data back. So we also have the where clause in place. <clears throat> 
and we want to use it now so for instance as you can see when you only select a star from employees we see all the columns and all the rows right we with select we can uh, filter for columns and with where we can filter for rows like we want to see only rows where the city column equals London and we can just say select every column from the employees where the rows match and uh, sorry the column city matches uh, the word London that's why it is in quotes here so if you do that we only get the full rows every column from each row that has London at the city column okay why not so what else is there so we cannot only say where city equals something we can only say where something is greater than equals lesser equal equals not equals you can also say that it is greater or uh, lesser it works with numbers dates and texts of course for texts uh, we say strings to this uh, it won't be that beneficial mostly so for instance we have employees let's show everything again uh, and we see there is a column where is it the birth date here so we can filter off and say okay let i want to know what employees do we have that are actually uh, born before 1960 okay and we see we have actually five uh, <coughs> employees in the top right uh, in the top uh, in the bottom right you see the five rows here and you also see the five rows enumerated here <coughs> and now we have of course all the employees with the birth date lesser than 1960 okay um so just one note strings and dates are enclosed with single quotes only numbers and the very few other data types are not enclosed in quotes so if we have a number, the only number in this table is actually employee ID. We can also select every uh, everything from the employees table where we have an employee ID that is lesser than five, and then we get those four rows, of course. Um, that brings us with the enclosing and the not enclosing it brings us directly to a data type. So a column has several properties. <clears throat> okay, the import, most important property is of course the name of it. Then we also have the data type. And one that we won't cover here is the nullability. We get deep dive into it later. Um, so the data type is important because of co uh, the system can in one column uh, is only able to store one data type in one column. So you can't uh, store dates and numbers in one column it's not possible it has to be only one of the data type that exists per column so the data type defines how the computer saves the information it means you can save this one two three four five six as a number then it uses four bytes of storage remember one byte are eight bits and one bit is either zero or one this is, should be uh, known to you uh, but you can also save one, two, three, four, five, six as text. But then it uses six to twelve bytes depending on uh, what you use for text data type. <coughs> so it takes more uh, space. Um, all value uh, values from a column have to fit to its data type. I told you this already. We can't have uh, text in a number column, number data type column. This is not possible. Um, for instance, if column phone number would contain only numbers, we would use a number data type for it because you saw we have lesser storage and we can also <coughs> query the data out of it e more easily. We will get to this later. If it can contain characters like plus or something that is not a number, we can of course not choose a number data type for it, so we have to use a text data type. So as you can see here in this example, the phone numbers, uh, where are they? The phone numbers actually uh, here also have spaces and the dashes, so we can't use a phone uh, string data type for this one. Um, yeah, the data type not only defines the type of storage, but also what we can do with the data. Okay, so let's introduce a few data types now. We have to do this to, in order to understand everything. So we have number data types. Let's start with this. We have the most common one that is integer, int, short for int. 
um, the number ranges from this value I want to, <laughs> I don't want to uh, tell you not the numbers to this value so if you have a number it is in, the, in this range you can uh, provide the int data type that is actually four bytes big so every number you save as int will be four bytes big then of course we have the big integer it is an eight byte integer meaning we every number in big int will be eight bytes it doesn't matter if it's a zero or it is this monstrosity of a number it will be stored in eight bytes of storage okay so obviously the range is much bigger <clears throat> but you have to really decide yourself what data type you need and what range your number can have of course that was all that this were only the integer data types now we have also flow data types like decimals with uh, yeah numeric decimals so depending so you can define a flow data type for numbers like 2.345 or whatever um, depending on the granularity of n um, of depending on that is the range we can cover with float so have a look at this link I also will provide this link into the in the description and you will see what the range actually is the decimal uh, is data type is always stated with X and a Y the X says what number of uh, digit it can store in total and the Y is how many digits of it are decimal places so to Con so to conclude everything, uh, int uses four bytes, big int uses eight bytes. Float depends on how many, how big the granularity is, and decimal um, is very simple. If the x is between one and nine, you will use five bytes. If the x is between ten and ninety-nine, and so on and so forth. So now let's play a little bit around with this. So we have uh, only theory now. Let's say we have those thing here. It's, it's obviously a number because it's not enclosed in captions. And this function here, data length, says me just how long, how, uh, how how long this data is in bytes. So let's run this. And of course, no surprise, the number itself is just here because we selected it, and we have four bytes of storage. So now we have uh, a big int variable. Don't be afraid of this uh, syntactic syntactical things here. We come, we will cover variables and stuff like this later. Just have a look that we. Now say one two three four five, uh, six should be set, uh, stored as in big int, and we want to have the data length of it. So now we see okay, this is the eight byte I said. The same thing with float. We have obviously also eight byte for this type of granularity, and for decimal we expect nine bytes, and of course we get nine bytes. Okay, so this this is with the number data types. Um, you have to choose between uh, floating and integer, and you have to. The rule of thumb is always to take the data type. This is the smallest possible uh, data type because then you uh, don't have so much storage space waste. Text data types. So they are fixed and variable length data types. Meaning, you have uh, char x and varchar x. So if you use char x, it saves exactly x characters, no matter how long your uh, word or sentence or whatever text actually is. It costs uh, with varchar you have the exact, not opposite, but um, the number of bytes it stores is actually the number you provided. We will have a look at this. So it saves exactly x characters or up to x characters depending on char or varchar and it costs one byte per character then we have also the n char and the n varchar uh, uh, data types it's basically the same as with char and varchar just the one difference is that it's stored in unicode and unicode uses not one byte but two bytes per character so if we store the same string uh, uh, one time in varchar the other time in n varchar we will have the double of storage used <clears throat> we have also n text uh, or text and n, but this is uh, deprecated. You should use uh, n varchar or varchar max or max. And we have also those data types that we that I don't want to cover here. So let's play a little bit around with the text data types. Here we have the text data type varchar 20 and hello world. Obviously, this is not 20 characters, and that's why we see that he only uses the 12 characters we provided. Let's have the same situation with uh, nvarchar test and you will see we have the double of the storage because it uses Unicode for encoding this 
text. Let's come to the last important data type that is time and date data types. I will here refer to my article that means in the description below you find an article in my blog that covers time and date data time in a very big detail so we don't need to cover it here again. I just want to summarize there are, it, there's a date time data type that stores the date and the time of course. Then there's a there's a data type called date only storing the date then one for all st only storing the time and date time 2 is an improvement of date time. It uh, can uh, be more effective in terms of storage but you have to look this up in the article if you really want to know what's the difference it's not so important you can use daytime and date for the first uh, few lessons we uh, do it here so we have here a test uh, variable of the date type date we provide a whole date with date time but since date only stores the date we only select the actual date of it now we can do this with date time and uh, as expected we get the all time uh, yeah, don't uh, be confused that we don't see the PM here, but he uh, but the SQL Server translates all date times internally if you don't say something else in a 24-hour format. So if you just say here like 2 PM, which would be 1400, you see the 14 here. Okay, and then we have date time two test. Um, we for date time two we can say how many digits. Uh, how many decimals uh, from the seconds we want to store. I don't want to have any milliseconds, so I just want the granularity seconds. Then we also get the granularity seconds. So that was it with the simple first query. Uh, please uh, try everything out. You set up the SQL Server 2014 uh, database and the Northwind database is uh, able to download. I provided you already videos about this. Um, please play around with it, play around with the data types and see what the sample database have and just explore a little bit. We will cover the SQL statements more in depth in the next video. Thanks for watching, have fun and goodbye.